1, Philemon, verse 1. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to the beloved Athea and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in, in his house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and your faith which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the knowledge of Acknowledgement of the every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because of the hearts of the saints have been re refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting. Yet, for love's sake, I rather appeal to you, being such a one as Paul, the age, and now a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I appeal to you, my son Ones Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains, who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. I am sending him back. You therefore receive him, that is, my own heart, whom I wish to keep with me, but with me that on your own behalf you might minister to me in the chains for the gospel. For without your consent I wanted to do nothing, and that your good deed might not be um, compulsion, as it were, but voluntarily. For perhaps he departed for a while for a purpose that you might receive him forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, about how much more to you, both in the flesh and the Lord. If then you counted me as a partner, receive him as you would me. But if he was wronged you and owes you anything, put it on my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self besides. Yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. But meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be granted to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you, as do Mark, Articus, Demas, Luke, my fellow laborers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with your spirit. Amen. So as we continue to keep studying the, the single books, one chapter books of the Bible, this morning I'd like for us to look here as we look at Philemon. And, and Philemon is a unique book. It's one of the few books of the Bible that is a personal letter written to a personal family, but it also had the application applying to the church. And so when we see this book here, there's one thing that goes through as we read it is the grace of God. The power of God's grace in the person's life and changing people. A favored hymn called Grace Greater Than Our Sins is a well-known Christian hymn with the lyrics by Julia Johnston and the music was written by Daniel Toner, Towner. The words of this hymn speaks of great grace that God has bestowed upon us, that God has given to us, that we have received when we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so verse 1 through 3 is Paul's opening as he sends this greeting, and, and, and he acknowledges as he's writing to them how important Philemon is, his wife, and most likely his son. Paul normally would state that he was an apostle when he's writing a letter to someone. But here, since Philemon and Paul were close friends, Paul states that he is a prisoner of of the Lord. He emphasizes that. Paul was in prison, and not because he killed Christians, which he did do. Now I gotta do is read the book of Acts, he murdered Christians. He's not in jail because of that he's in jail because of his testimony and his faith for Jesus Christ after he got saved. Timothy was also a faithful friend of Paul and Philemon, so he mentions Timothy as he's writing to him. Philemon was a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. And so was his house. He even used his own home for a house church there where he was at. Aphia, which is most likely Philemon's wife, was also a participant and was involved in the church. And so was most likely their son, Archippus. They were serving God. They were loving God. They were using their gifts, their talents, and abilities for the glory of God. Even though this is a personal letter to Philemon and his family, again, it was meant to be read to the church as a whole when they gathered together in his house. We have an acronym that is a lot of times used for grace. 
God's righteousness at Christ's expense. But there's a, a, a definition that goes a little more deeper than that. And the definition is receiving that which is good that we don't deserve. Something that we receive that we have done nothing for. We have not worked, we have not done anything to receive it. It's a true gift. And that's what grace is. It's God's gift, again, at Christ's expense. Also in here we see that talking about it, that this, this situation of grace and mercy. Mercy, is the way I look at it, mercy is not receiving that which we have done that we deserve. The punishment, the consequences. Mercy is not being paid back for something that we have done that we deserve to have done back to us. And so grace is receiving that which we do not deserve that is good. And mercy is not receiving the bad that we do deserve because of how we have behaved or what we have said and done. And this book is powerful when we look into it, when we study it. You see this as a letter written from one Christian brother to another Christian brother and to his family. As he's speaking about grace and mercy of God, may it impact our hearts as we go through this letter this morning. That it would help us to see to change how we behave, how we relate to one another. And he uses the word peace, which was a Jewish greeting or a welcoming, as he's writing this letter. And so God's grace is truly beyond our comprehension. But one thing we know is that God the Father loved us so much that he allowed his Son, Jesus Christ, God the Son, to die in our place for our sin. If you happen to be listening to this message and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, let today be that day you trust and believe in his death, burial, and resurrection to save you that you can become part of the family of God. And then we come to verses 4 through 7. And here in this portion of this letter, Paul is thanking Philemon, and he's telling Philemon how much he appreciates him, how much he, 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 he is blessed by the way Philemon has lived for God. And he says, I pray for you. I pray for you on a regular basis, Philemon. God brings you to my mind. That's how important you are to me. And so Paul now proceeds as he lets Philemon know that he's been praying for him. Even while a prisoner, Paul finds faith and trust in God to be able to be thankful. That's hard to do, isn't it? Think about when we have some of our little trials and tribulations that we go through and how we're sometimes a type of person nobody wants to be around with. How we can be disgruntled and complaining, maybe even downright mean. Here Paul is being thankful thankful even though he's a prisoner because of what Philemon and how Philemon is serving God. Paul specifically thanks God for his brother and the Lord. He says, I thank the Lord, Philemon, that, 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 that you got saved and we are brothers in Christ together. We need to be praying for one another, encouraging one another as much as we can because we are the family of God. We also need to make sure that we're taking time to thank God on a regular basis for our brothers and sisters in Christ and for the things they do as they serve the Lord. Think of all the little different things that go around the church sometimes most people never see. And, and, and God brings that person to mind when you're praying. Think about and thank God for what they're doing that, that, that is a blessing and a service to God and to the people of God. Paul was so thankful for Philemon also because of his example Philemon was an example to other believers because of his faith and his love. Philemon was such an example of Paul says, says, you make such a great testimony and witness there in your local area where you're at. You have a power for the gospel to reach the lost. How are we doing ourselves in that area? Do people see us people of faith? Do our neighbors, our family, our friends see us people of love? Hopefully so. Hopefully we can be like Philemon and, and be an example to those around, especially our lost loved ones. So we need to ask God to help us to be like Philemon, that we too would be an example to our lost loved ones and our friends and family, just as Jesus Christ loved us. You know, you may be the only witness that your family member who's lost has. You may be the only witness that co-worker who drives you nuts at work has for the gospel being shown before them by how they live and how they behave. 
You may be the only person that your neighbor across the street or down the road from you that has someone to be able to, to, to live out the life of Christ in such a way that their life is an example, that our life is an example to them of, of what Jesus has done for us, and they want to know why. And they may even come and ask us, why do you behave like you do? Why do you do the things that you do? And we get a chance to share because Jesus has saved us. You may be also the only person that has a chance to witness that person in the store or in the grocery line that you're waiting at. You may be the only person who has an opportunity to share the gospel with them. May we be like Philemon and, 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 and we be an example of how we live, how we behave, that the gospel has power. Philemon not only demonstrated his love for God, as Paul says, your love abounds, but he demonstrated his love towards others. His care for them. His brothers and sisters in Christ. Are you someone who sees, how can I take advantage of my brothers and sisters? Or are you, see some, are you someone that tries as, how can I be used to be a blessing to them? As Philemon was. It is sad, there are times when brothers and sisters in Christ sin against one another. And they just can't get along. That behavior hurts our testimony for the Lord. It hurts our testimony towards those lost people I just mentioned that are in our lives. Philemon was willing to share his faith and tell others about how Jesus saved him and how Jesus can save them also if they would only believe in his death, burial, and resurrection for the forgiveness of their sins. Philemon had a good reputation, not only in the church but in the community. People knew he was a man of character. People in the community knew he was a man who lived for God, that loved others, and wanted to share God's love with them. He was a man that was respected in the community because of his faith and his love. Paul prayed that Philemon would be a great witness and continue to be a great witness for the Lord in his community. He said, I'm praying that God allow you to continue to share the gospel. To share the gospel with those who need to hear around you, Philemon. That you have an impact for God. Philemon's service and witness brought a smile to Paul's face. He says, when I think about you, Philemon, and I think about how God is using you since you got saved, I see how God is using you to be a witness and testimony as you're loving God and loving others and being faithful to God. It brings a smile across my face. I rejoice, Philemon, in how you serve the Lord. Hopefully we're doing the same thing, that other people are excited about how we serve God. And that we're being a blessing to one another and not being a hindrance and a problem. Even though Paul couldn't freely walk through the streets, he couldn't even go next door to tell others about Christ, he was excited for those who had an impact for God, that they were doing the work of God. Again, Ministry is not just left to the pastor or the leaders of the church. The ministry is to be done by all believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. And Philemon is one brother in Christ that God is using in a mighty way. It is encouraging to see people grow in the Lord and then use those gifts, those talents, those abilities they have. Maybe they're special gifts they got after they got saved, but just the gifts they have when they were born and the talents they have as they grow up, and, and their abilities to do things, and using them for the blessing of God, using them for the praise and the glory of the Lord. That's what's important for us as believers. This life is going to end one day, and we're going to stand before our Lord, and He's going to try our works to see what has been done for His honor and His glory, and what has been done for our own selfish gain. And hopefully we'll have more like Philemon that's been used for the glory of God. Our gifts, our talents, our abilities, our skills. So if you have gifts, talents, or abilities, and you haven't been using those gifts, talents, abilities, or skills for God, ask God to help you to see how you can use them. You have a place and a purpose to serve the body of Christ as you serve God for Him. And then we come to verses 8 through 16. Paul's plea now. He, he, he's talked to Philemon and talked to his family. He's told him how much he appreciates him. Now he's going to address the real reason he had to write this letter in the first place. It's a deal with Onesimus. You see, Paul was a prisoner. Again, he was limited what he could do. How Paul and Onesimus met, we're not told. 
But we are told that Onesimus became a believer in Jesus Christ somewhere along the way by coming in contact with Paul. It's amazing. Paul, even in prison, he's still sharing the gospel and people are still getting saved. Paul would like to have gone to Philemon. He wanted to go with Onesimus to Philemon. He wanted to go help them work through this situation, this problem that needed to be taken care of, but he was not allowed because he was a prisoner. Paul could have used his apostolic authority and power and leader in the church says, you must do this, but he doesn't. He instead appeals to Philemon and he, he tells him to, to, to make a decision that's influenced by his relationship with Jesus Christ. By the relationship with Jesus Christ that he received through Paul's testimony, through Paul's witness to him. Paul led Philemon to the Lord most likely by the letter as it is written. He had a part in Philemon getting saved at least. So the problem is Paul's getting ready to dress as Onesimus is a runaway slave. Onesimus left Philemon before he got saved. We're not sure at what point or what time. But Onesimus in Roman law committed a major crime, like stealing someone's car, maybe even greater in their day as he ran away. He was considered property to the owner. He had a debt he had to pay as a slave, and he left without paying it. Onesimus got to experience the grace of God, though, as he met Paul. Having his sins forgiven by believing in, the, in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection to forgive him of his sins. Onesimus got to join Paul in being a brother in Christ. And Paul lets Philemon know he went through the same process. Through the same ability that Paul had as he was able to share the gospel with Philemon. The word Paul uses here to talk about Onesimus and he's talking about the relationship as Paul writes and he says he is bold. He carries the meaning of liberty, freedom, and boldness. Interesting that Paul, who was a prisoner, would use such a word as he's writing. I am writing with liberty. I'm writing with boldness. I'm writing for the purpose to let you know that there's something that has to be taken care of. Paul reminds Philemon of the love of God that he personally is now obligated and he has received through Paul's ministry. Paul, who is, not a, who is a prisoner of Jesus Christ and a brother in the Lord, he was not only that, he was also considered elderly. We're not sure how old he is at this point, but he was considered someone of age that was supposed to be respected. And so he pleads with Philemon to consider his request. He's about ready to tell him. So Paul, in verse 10, now tells Philemon what he is pleading with him to do. First, Paul explains the change of Onesimus since he got saved. Since Onesimus trusts in the Lord, Onesimus has changed. He has become a different person. Onesimus, his name means blessing. He was anything but a blessing to Philemon. But he had become a blessing to, the Lord, uh, to, to Paul as he served the Lord. So when Onesimus ran away in Roman culture again in much of Paul's day, it was considered major theft. But since getting saved, Paul states here that the true character of Nesimus changed to being good, being beneficial, being a blessing. Paul knew that Nesimus had to make things right, though, with Philemon. That's part of, of, of us making reconciliation between God and also with one another. The word used here in our Christian culture, we use the word reconciliation, means to try to make things right, to balance things out in, in a legal aspect, in accounting. That we reconcile and make it correct. And Onesimus had a debt that had to be corrected. God forgave his sin debt. But there's always still consequences sometimes we have to face here on earth because of our sin choices. And that consequence Onesimus had to face was that he had to go back to Philemon to make things right with him. For him to be able to be, able to be with Paul and be in great ministry in the Lord. So Paul told Onesimus he had to go back to Philemon and face whatever punishment Philemon may have for him being a runaway slave. Roman law allowed them to punish a runaway slave severely. Almost to the point of death if they just so chose to do so. So Onesimus, as he's making this decision, listening to Paul to go reconcile this problem, he realizes as he goes back, he it may face under Roman law, great beatings. 
And he still makes that decision. He has to do what is right and go make reconciliation with Philemon. And again, Onesimus' name means useful, profitable. And, and, and you can imagine Philemon, as he's probably got this part of this letter, Onesimus, the one who ran away, the one who stole from me, I, I can't see him being beneficial at all. He was an unworthy slave when he worked for me. I can imagine the feelings that Philemon has. Paul emphasizes that Onesimus is coming to Philemon for a purpose. That he was lost when he ran away, but now he's saved. And Paul emphasized now that he's saved, he's no longer to be seen as a slave. He's to be seen as a brother or sister in Christ. Paul knew that unless Philemon would forgive Onesimus and would grant for him freedom to serve with Paul, Onesimus could not stay. Paul wanted Onesimus to be with him because he was a great blessing to Paul and encouragement to Paul. Paul wanted to know that God was being used and wanted Philemon to know that God was using Onesimus and he wanted Philemon to also know that God has a plan for Onesimus. But that was all conditioned upon what Philemon would decide to do himself. In verses 17 to 22, Paul encourages Philemon to follow the teachings of Christ. Paul started out by encouraging Philemon about his Christian relationship, fellowship, and friendship that the two of them had together. Paul states that he would love to have come to Philemon himself and, and to brought Onesimus to him. And he's begging Philemon to receive Onesimus as he would receive Paul if Paul had come. God's grace, receiving the good that we don't deserve, and his mercy, not receiving the bad, the punishment that we do for our bad things we have done. Here now, Paul is asking Philemon to show grace and mercy to Onesimus. He's asking Philemon to forgive him and grant him his freedom. Mercy by not punishing Onesimus and beating him as he deserves by Roman law. And he had every just cause to do that but also to give him grace. Give him grace by forgiving him of his sin he's done against him. By giving and offering grace that God offered to him when he once was an enemy of God, but now a child of God. Paul was willing to even pay any debt that, Fi that Onesimus still owed Philemon. There's a possibility by the wording here that Onesimus not only ran away, which was considered a theft in Roman law, but for him to run away, he had to have monetary means. And, it's, and the wording here sounds like he even stole from Philemon to be able to pay for his ability to run away. And Paul says, anything he owes to you, I'm willing to pay it back if you forgive him. Wow. Paul didn't have a whole lot of means. He was in prison. But he says, whatever I have, I'm willing to pay for him to take care of this debt he owes you. And Paul says, I write this in my own hand. He may have wrote this whole letter by himself. It's a short letter. Or that one por portion, kind of like his signature. I will claim his debt. So Philemon gets this and he reads this. He knows Paul is good for his word. Paul still, though, leaves the decision up to Philemon what he's going to do about Onesimus. But he says in his heart he believes that Philemon will do the right thing. And he will follow the commands and teachings of Christ concerning this issue. God's grace is powerful. It can help us do things that are not natural, help us do the supernatural, such as forgiving someone who does not deserve to be forgiven. That's hard to do. But that's what God did for us. When a person is truly repentant, and God has forgiven them because of the repentant heart, Jesus Christ asked us to do the same thing. So Paul closes his letter his personal letter to his friend Philemon, and he acknowledges other people that were with him. 
Paul lets Philemon know that he anticipates that maybe he'll soon be released and he will come and see Philemon and they can fellowship together. He says, get a room ready for me because I plan on coming. Paul also states those who Philemon knew who were still with Paul and they sent their well wishes and greetings to Philemon and his family and to the church there. So conclusion. There are some powerful lessons in this little letter of Paul's to Philemon. One, as believers, we need to be careful that we don't seek to take advantage of one another. That can happen real easy. That we take advantage of one another. Just as Onesimus could have expected and almost demanded because he said that Philemon had to forgive him of his debt. That would have been taken in advantage of Philemon. If Onesimus just demanded that, if he would have went to him and says, now that I'm saved, you have to forgive me. There's nowhere in Scripture that, that, that Philemon had to do that other than the Lord says, this is how my example is. I want you to live it out. You forgive others as I have forgiven you. And so Philemon has a choice here. Will he forgive Onesimus? We don't know. We're not told. Another thing we can learn and we see here that, that we as believers may sometimes need to step in when we see two believers are not getting along. They're having problems. Paul was willing to step in that mold, being someone respected by both of them, to try to work out and bring this reconciliation that had to happen between Onesimus and Philemon. He was willing to stick his neck out there to work through it so they could build this relationship and work through their problems. And we as believers need to be willing to do that at times when God puts it on our heart. We see two brothers or two sisters in Christ just not getting along. We can turn and say, well, it's not my problem. Or we can be like Paul and say, God, how can I be used to help reconcile this problem between these two? Because their, their, their relationship right now is not just hurting themselves. It's hurting their families. It's hurting the church. And God, we need to bring people back together to get along so we can continue the ministry for God. Another thing we have here, one final thing that we can learn as believers. You and I have received not only mercy from God, not being punished for our sins when we trust in Jesus Christ. That's awesome, isn't it? We know we never have to face hell if we know Jesus Christ is our Savior. But we also receive the gift from God, not just the mercy, but the gift from God that we are no longer His enemies. The gift is we are now His family. And you may not like the person that's sitting next to you or behind you or across from you to see, but they're a family of God if they know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we need to be living like the family of God, showing love and care and help towards one another and not seeing what can we benefit from this, but what can we give and help one another. And if you're listening to this again this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, let today be that day that you believe in His death, burial, and resurrection and forgive you of your sins so that you too can experience the grace of God. Grace, grace, God's grace, greater than all our sins. Amen. Let us close in prayer. Father, Lord, we thank You for Your Word, and I pray, Lord, for us as believers those who know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that you help us to have a heart that Paul is pleading for Philemon to have for Onesimus, one of care, one of compassion, one of forgiving. And Lord, we pray for the one that may be listening that does not know Christ as their Savior, that today would be the day they would trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection to forgive them of their sins. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.